Hello. Okay, so I want to do a little thing right now, kind of like maybe get into a flow of doing some Monday night classes. 8.30 would be for singles, 9.30 will be for couples. Obviously, as usual, I will be talking to women 95% of the time, um, just because I really feel like it's, it's us that create the great relationship. Um, you know, it's interesting because there was so many lessons that my husband had to teach me. And when I finally really started opening myself up to learning the sort of things that he was really trying to have me understand in the relationship, when I finally started getting more into that frame of mind that he was bringing into the relationship, things opened up. But, it, you know, it really takes somebody to be the hero in the relationship. And I find that when women lead the way, because my husband kind of, you know, he showed me some doors. But until I was the one that really stepped up and led the way in the relationship, it didn't get this good. And my whole goal in everything that I do here is A, getting you through half the battle, getting you into the right relationship with the right person. Because when you make those efforts with that right person, it super pays off. Uh, but if you're making an effort with the wrong person, it's just not going to happen for you. So that being said, here we are, 8.30, Monday night. Let's get into some dating advice. So what I'm going to talk about today is how you create an online presence that is going to give you the relationship that you're looking for. Like it really starts with with just coming out into the world and the way that you present yourself into the world because most communication is nonverbal, and so it really doesn't matter what you say what matters is what you do and you are clicking things in the other person's mind based on the sort of things that you're doing and what you're presenting and how you are more than what you're saying and as a sociologist who studies anthropology, biology, psychology, which makes me an incredible behaviorist, I teach you the behaviors that get you the outcomes that you're looking for. And trust me, I had to learn this the hard way. I am not coming at this from a purely academic level. I am coming at this from knowledge and experience and marrying the two, finding those outcomes, and then going, wow, this worked for me. Let me see how it works for you. Talking to people, helping them through their issues and, and really consistently seeing A plus B equals C. And when you're a scientist and especially a social scientist and, and you see behaviors and outcomes, behaviors and outcomes over and over again, what you end up with is a formula. Hi, Lisa, good to see you. Uh, so first of all, when it comes to online dating, even though I've been with my husband for, well, since 2006, um, I mean, look, I'm 45, right? Like back in the day before I was on the internet, it was on the phone. Um, so I did, I did the, uh, I did the phone dating. I, then I did the online dating once the internet came about. Um, and, and you know, a long time ago, it wasn't the way that it is now. You didn't have all these predators and all these scammers you know, you, you had a lot more people that were actually looking for relationships because the ones that were just looking for hookups were in the bars. They didn't figure out that going online was so great. Hi, Sandra, it was so great for finding women and just cycling through them really fast. Um, so, <laughs> don't get me started. I know, it is, I know. So, it, a lot has changed and I got I got a taste of that when my husband and I broke up. Uh, I'd say probably this 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 time would have been I'd say around 2009, and we broke up, and I was like, "This is it. I'm gonna get into dating." And I created my Plenty of Fish online profile, and let me tell you, I was off in a couple of weeks because it was. It was it was kind of heartbreaking, um, you know, because there's there's so much emotional bullshit that goes on when you do online dating, and I get that. Uh, there was a lot of um, 
you know, the hey, how are you, the low level. And I wasted a lot of time thinking those were actual responses from people that were actually interested in me as a person. And it wasn't until I started working with clients and really seeing what's happening right here now, 2018, 2017, and seeing those text messages that they get, which, you know, it wasn't like that, I don't think so much in 2009. It is bad right now. Oh, awesome, Lisa, bring them on. It was, it was, it's, it's bad. I am seeing so much bullshit online right now and I'm feeling for you ladies. Like I am feeling for you big time. And there's a lot of bullshit in dating. There's a lot of fear. You being coerced, you are being tricked, you are being deceived. You have guys and, and if you know how I talk, yet you know I classify males into two categories. You have guys who are selfish short-term thinkers, you have men who are long-term generous thinkers. And you know, getting you to understand those differences, I help you decode a little bit better how you're gonna separate the guys from the men so that you can push these ones, the guys, out of the equation fast before you waste any time on them and be open to the man because ladies, oh my God, I see men all the time, they come to me at my book signings, they go, why can't I find anybody? And I say, because women are getting sucked into relationships with guys, not understanding that they're selfish short-term thinkers because guys are saying the same thing men are, which is, I'm looking for a relationship, I'm in for the long haul, I'm looking for my dream woman, and wow, it seems to be you. And, you know, we are emotional creatures and we really, we get swept up in that romantic fantasy and guys are so good at creating the fantasy. They are so good at looking like Prince Charming because they are very, very good at the big effort in the beginning. And when it drops off because they can't sustain it because they're selfish short term. So when that big effort drops off, we hold on to that beginning phase. So anyways, far gone, people. Do you got your vino? Let me see who's got their wine. So this whole chat tonight is about creating an online profile your online presence that doesn't put you through the bullshit. Okay, let me take that back. You might still go through some bullshit, but you're not gonna go through the bullshit at the level that you might be right now. Um, I want you to understand how guys are operating online, and I want you to understand how men are operating online, because there's, because they're so different, because they have these different mindsets, the approach that attracts them is actually different. So when you are online and you are creating your profile, the visual appeal, that first image that they see, your profile picture is all a guy is going to see. That is it. That's his, that he's scrolling. He's going flip, 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 flip. He's going through fast and he's looking for one thing and it's the woman that's gonna make his penis move. And that, and even if it moves just a little bit, because what he's doing is he is sending out a lot of responses in a day. Because he's looking for something short term, he's moving fast through the internet. And so, <laughs> and so what he's doing is he's flipping through and he's looking for a picture that's gonna make it move and he's gonna click on that picture, he's gonna go to message, he's not even gonna read what you wrote, he's gonna go straight to message, and he's gonna write a very short response. And the very short response is because he doesn't know anything about you. So it's gonna be, hi. Or, and I mean like seriously, it just might be hi. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about. Hi, hey, how are you doing? How's your day? nice picture, you look beautiful, short, 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 there is no effort because his effort is actually spent fishing. So he's throwing the line out over and over again, throwing the line out over and over, throwing the line, right? And so he needs to do that a hundred times to find that one girl who's gonna catch. 
and she's gonna reply. And she's gonna, basically, she's gonna see the cute profile picture that he's got. And then she's gonna click on his profile because ladies, come on, we do some research, we're not stupid. So we're gonna click on his profile, we're gonna look at what he wrote, we're gonna look at his pictures, and we're gonna start falling for what we see. Good on paper, right? So he's got his pictures of him without a shirt on, him beside a nice car, uh, you know, him having a beer with buddies. Um, you know, it's just, it's him having fun looking good. And that is appealing because we are visual creatures and we are designed to seek, hey, <laughs> we're designed to seek what's appealing and lean in and just kind of want to decode it. And so we're gonna look into his profile, he's gonna look good, so then we're gonna read. And if he looks really good, some of us are gonna overlook the fact that he's not saying a whole lot in his profile. He might even say in there, um, you know, we'll add more later kind of thing. Sort of making it seem like when he created his profile just in that moment and he's so brand new and he just, he, he didn't take, he didn't have time to think too much right now. Maybe he's even saying in his profile, I work a lot. Listen, ladies, if he's already setting you up in his profile to expect little of him, he's setting you up to expect little of him. So pay attention to what you're seeing in there. And, and really the fact is, if he's sending you just that really short little blurb, hi, you look beautiful nice car if you're leaning against a car if he's if he's being really short in what he's saying you shouldn't even be clicking on his profile the only effort you should be making if he's making this much effort you should be expending this much effort because when it comes to dating you should be matching each other and as a woman you should be matching his and so he reaches out and he says something. If it's a little bit of effort, expend just a little bit of effort to click that delete button. And if he messages you again, a very short little message, that little bit of effort, then you expend a little bit of effort to press the block button because he is not worth your time. He's not spending time creating a profile that describes him. He is not spending time to let you know that he's read your profile. He is not spending any more time on you than it takes to see if you're gonna hook in. That's it. So do not spend any more time back. Here's what's gonna happen if you reply to that. So here you get from this really cute guy, uh, how's your day going? So then you reply back, great, how's yours? And he says something back that's a little bit flirty and you, I mean, your, your blood is pumping a little bit right now because he's cute, I don't know, he's got a job, maybe he's good. You're already starting to dream a little bit, see yourself in his arms, you're wondering how he kisses because now there's some sexual tension that's going on. And so you're gonna flirt back with him. He flirts a little bit back with you. There's a little bit of a conversation that goes on and then he sends you a picture of himself and he goes, how about you? You send a picture back. He sends a flirty picture of himself. You send a flirty one back. And then he goes, let's meet. And you're like, and you're thinking date because you said in your profile, I'm looking for a relationship, not looking for hookups. You thought you were clear. The fact is he doesn't know because he didn't read anything that you wrote. And so you're saying, how about a coffee? Let's go out for dinner, or, you know, just something that feels like a date. And he says, no, nah, that's boring. Or I don't have time. Let's just meet at the bar. And so again, it's low level. It's not about who you are. It's just about getting that face to face because here's what he wants. He wants to win you over with his charm, his personality, his looks, whatever he might flash in terms of his phone, his watch, his car. And he wants you to think that this package is your long-term package. He wants you to think that he can always be this charming. He can always be this funny. He can always be this attentive. He sent you a lot of text messages, didn't he? So you're falling for the facade and you're falling for someone who's never shown you that he's really that interested in who you are as a person. And this is what I don't want you to do. I don't want you to fall for the guys if what you're actually looking for is a man. Now, 
as you well know, I talk a lot about no kissing for three months, which is a way of really weeding out the guys because selfish short-term thinkers don't wait that long. <sighs> I just got a notification, it totally distracted me. Um, and so the whole point of this no kissing for three months, stating your intent the first time you meet him, because again, he might not have read your profile, is letting him know exactly what it is you're looking for because you want both of you to make an educated decision. You want to know who and what he is. Is this a guy who's selfish short term? And you want him to know who and what you are. Are you a woman who's looking for a long-term relationship? If you are not looking for a long-term relationship, if you really are looking for something quick, fast, easy, scratch that itch, have a good time, goodbye, get out of my bed tomorrow, please, because I got stuff to do and I'm not thinking about really getting a partner right now because I'm focused on my kids, I'm focused on my life, I'm focused on my work. I've got other things I really want to do and I don't want to spend so much time in a relationship. The selfish short-term thinkers are the ones you want. And so when you create your online profile, you do want it to be super sexy. But if you are looking for a long-term relationship, that profile picture cannot be sexy because that is what is attracting those guys who are sending out all those responses and who get kind of like a verbal bullshit vomit coming out of their mouths when you don't respond to them the way that they want you to. Some of them are pushy, some of them are jerks, some of them are assholes, and some of them get verbally abusive when it turns out that you're not looking for something quick and easy and aren't in the selfish short-term mode like they are. Bill, you said women should press for a bit of depth to see what his reaction is and if he can handle it. Bill, my advice is don't even waste the time because his first initial response is, it, it displays something, doesn't it? Like, let's have this conversation. If you, and, and I know you're a man, so if you are online looking for somebody for a long-term relationship, how long will your first message to her be? And I really want to see your answer to this. I'm watching for it. I feel that when a man is online, the, the, the long-term generous thinker, the one who's looking for the woman that, because there are men looking for relationships, Bill, you were one of them when they're looking for somebody to settle in with, to create a life with, to buy a house with, to, f to start a family with, to work hard for, to uplift her and make her happy and make her laugh because her joy is his joy. That man is deep and he gets in depth. And when he's going through the profile pictures, he's, he's not necessarily looking for the woman who's who, who's just showing her sexiness. He's not looking for the, the selfie pouty booby picture. He's looking for somebody that's going to trigger a connection right away. Like, she's pretty, yes. She's having fun. You're gonna have a genuine smile in your profile picture and she's doing something that I can relate to. So she's, she's at an activity that is something that I go to, like a baseball game or a camping or by a beach. Um, so I look at her in that picture and I can see myself in her life with her. Let me click and see what else she's about. And so your profile picture, again, for a man does not need to be sexy, but it needs to be connecting. And, and that smile has to be genuine because those little muscles that crinkle up around your eyes and, and ladies, please stop doing the Botox around your eyes because you're losing out on some amazing dopamine because when those, when those lines around your eyes, those muscles, when that contraction happens, those muscles send a signal to your brain that you are smiling and your brain in response releases dopamine and dopamine is the same chemical that your body produces when you snort cocaine. It is your reward chemical and it makes you feel good and it flushes you and it kind of pumps you up a little bit. So having a profile picture that has that going on, that 
that genuine smile, that come hither look, but doing something that he can see himself doing with you is going to attract him. If you have a very sexy picture, it's going to attract him as well, but here's how he's gonna separate you. She's super sexy, so she must be play. She's doing something I see myself doing with her, she must be long-term. Do you see what I'm saying here? You're, you're triggering mindsets with your profile picture and I want you to trigger the right one. So you doing something you love, having a great time doing it, and he's gonna go, I do that too and I wanna do it with her, click. So then he gets into your profile. So what do you write in your profile? Get deep, get deep ladies, because good men are usually smart men and they might be readers and they might be looking for that person who's writing a whole lot about their life so he can start ticking boxes off because as a dating coach one of the things that i have you do is create your perfect man list so that you recognize him when you see him right he's got his perfect woman list in his head too so when he reads your bio you want him to be checking off those things that relate thank you bill Phil just said, great video. Yay us. So you want him to check off, check off the things that relate to him. And so the more in detail you get, the more he's realizing that you're the one for him and the more ready, willing, and able he's gonna be to click message and send you that, that, that email that's gonna say, hey, I saw your profile. It really intrigued me. I love what you said about blah, blah, blah. And so do you see the difference right there? The low level self, a short term thinker, just looking for that low level relationship, nothing really deep, you know, easy come, easy go, get out of my bed tomorrow morning kind of thing. He, he's, he's not caring about anything that you wrote because the only box he's ticking off is we'll have sex. So by giving a lot of detail, letting this man know that you have a lot in common, it gives him a lot to say to you and it gives you what you need to understand what kind of male he is and so when you do get those longer responses you're going to understand what it is that you're facing now the second thing that you want to keep in mind is this is not the place to talk about what you don't want so don't say not looking for hookups in great big bold letters your picture should already say that so you don't need to state that. You, you don't need to vomit your past negative experiences into this profile bio because what's gonna happen in his mind when he reads that is, uh, she's damaged goods. She's been through too many negative experiences. I'm gonna take her out on a date and she's just gonna talk about all these horrible things that she's been through and it's gonna be really boring. So don't be negative in your bio, be positive. Um, don't talk about what you're looking for in a man. He's going to compare himself to you and ask himself, am I a good match? So you, you don't need to describe that. Really just keep it about you and about who you are. There's a lot of negativity on the internet. You are going to be, I mean, listen, if, if you do the kind of stuff that I tell you to do, you're going to be the most different woman he's ever met in his entire life he won't know how to handle you and he won't be able to get enough of you. Believe me. So be in your bio a breath of fresh air. Be the one that's positive, that knows who she is and waits for somebody who sees himself as a match for her. Now, when it comes to applying with that person, don't, again, don't think you have to be sexy to make it happen. Men are, they're looking for a substance. They're looking for something deep and they already see the sexiness in you, believe me. They, they already, they're already peeling your clothes off in their minds. It's just, they're waiting for you to peel that layer for them and they're willing to wait for it. And making them wait for it actually increases their interest in you. And I, like, I just want you to think about the last time you were anticipating something that was really good that was going to come your way the longer you had to wait for that goodness the more 
delectable it seemed at the end of that stick, that carrot right there. So allow yourself to be you in the beginning and then let the sexiness come in when he's shown you that he's interested in who you are. Listen, you, you've got, if, if you're in this for the next 30 years, you have plenty of time to unpeel that layer. For now, the layer that you want to unpeel is just, are we compatible on a human level? That's it. So when you're applying back, banter. Don't necessarily flirt. Keep that for later. You don't want to get the sexuality in too quickly because you don't want him to skip so fast from the getting to know you as a person phase to the thinking about you as a sexual object phase. You know, let him earn that place let him work towards that so be light uh, don't be heavy don't talk about issues um, and get on the phone fast or get on face chat fast like get like a some kind of like a, a live human interaction quickly because the one thing that you really kind of you know there's a lot of things to peel back as you're going through this process you want to peel off the guys who are selfish short-term thinkers. You want to peel off the scammers. The scammers are the guys that are in Nigeria and they're looking for women who are going to fall for somebody and then send them money because, oh, he, you know, he's, he's amazing, but he wants to come see me and he can't because he has to get some paperwork to go get his passport and it's going to cost $200. And then he got in an accident and he's in the hospital and it's going to cost $1,500. And then he got arrested and he's in jail and the bail's $3,000. So you want to be sure this isn't one of them. And so you want to get some kind of like human to human contact going really quickly to ascertain that the person that you're messaging is actually a human being who's local. And by the way, don't fall for somebody who's far away because again, this could be a scammer. Um, if he's not available to date you, he's not available. I, I know some people get into long-term relationships with um, long-distance people and that's fine. It's If that's what you want, then, then do it. For some people this really works because they really are super involved in their own lives and they have this much time for a relationship and really a long-distance relationship is something that works best for them because it doesn't require much time. But if you are looking for somebody that you're going to live with and start a family with, then you need him to be local enough that you don't have this obstacle, which is somebody has to move. Um, unless you know, you're searching dating profiles or setting up a dating profile in a city that you actually want to move to one day, um, which is good strategy, by the way. So keep it local. Make sure that you're asking you know, really quickly, where are you from? Um, really clarifying that because sometimes people will be searching in your area but they're not from your area and if you're looking for somebody to, to really get into something with um, and you don't want to waste time you know doing this prolonged long distance thing then really seek somebody who's going to be local so get that FaceTime get that phone conversation get that human contact and if this works out then you take it to the next step, which is getting that face-to-face -face and going on a first date. Um, so this is you know, gonna be it for me talking about what your online experience is gonna be. Hopefully, if you implement these steps, you don't get the assholes anymore. Um, this will reduce the number of jerks who are reaching out to you. It's gonna reduce the flooding of your inbox it's going to whittle down the people that are responding to you to the ones that are really serious about you and dating and starting a relationship. Uh, gonna give you some call to actions. So, uh, you know, you probably know by now, I've got a bunch of books on dating and relationships and you get one of them free when you go to my website, canadasdatingcoach.com or lovemaker.com and you sign up for my mailing list. I send you a digital copy of Fake Love Need Not Apply you can uh, obviously you're on my Facebook but I'm also posting this on YouTube so go to my Facebook page I do my live videos from there and uh, you know like my page so that you get notifications when I do my blog posts I always set something up on Facebook so that you see um, 
You can also find me on Twitter and Instagram and iTunes. I got some podcasts up. So, you know, go to my website. You got a little icons at the top. Check me out. Uh, if you've already read one of my books, I love you. I know you're doing well because you're following my advice and it's working for you. So go on Amazon and go write a review because I want you to help me spread the love. If you are taking my advice and it's generating results for you, I want you to tell more people because I'm really here to start a revolution. I'm not here for a good time. I'm here to change things and have a good time doing it. So ciao for now and catch y'all next Monday.